This is BBC Two, where for the last time this week, it's The Late Show. Actual door, past young hopefuls on their way to fame and fortune. This is the door to stardom, son. Let's go through it, shall we? It's locked, Grandad. Alexi no, Sale no, takes no. us through the back door on the 10th birthday of the comedy store. Photo montage, does it distort or reveal the truth? Bochumal Harabal is years since the opening of Britain's first venue for so-called alternative comedy, the Comedy Store in London. We asked Alexi Sale, one of the pioneering veterans of alternative comedy, to look back at those early years for us. Of course, Alexi has grandchildren of his own now, and one of them, Noddy Sale, accompanied his granddad on this touching trip down Mirth's memory lane. then is it granddad yes son this is it this is the actual door through which all those years ago names which to you are now household words used to pass in and out of through that actual door past young hopefuls on their way to fame and fortune this is the door to stardom son let's go through it shall we it's locked granddad never mind they usually leave the toilet window open. And this is one of the dressing rooms, is it, Grandad? Yes. One of the rooms where people used to sit before going on stage and developing so-called alternative comedy. That's right. And get dressed. Mm -hmm. What you should understand is that before venues like the Comedy Store came along, there were only two ways you could become a stand-up comic. The first way was to do the clubs and opportunity knocks and new faces. And the main requirements for that sort of work were A, a number of female relatives you wanted to publicly humiliate, and B, the kind of racial xenophobia that made Oswald Mosley look like a frozen jubbly. Or you could go straight to the BBC and have an interview that went... So, you want to be one of those comedian chappies, do you? Oh, yes please, sir. What makes you think you'll be any good for the job? Well, I've got a first from Cambridge, sir. Good show. What shall I put you down for, Python or Goody? And before you could say, is this a cheese shop, George Allison was giving you millions of pounds. So, if you hadn't either got a psychotic loathing of the underclasses or Latin O-level, you didn't stand a chance. And all that changed in 79, did it, Grandad? Well, you must also remember that a lot of other things changed in 1979. You see, one of the traditional spawning grounds of young comedians had always been the northern working men's clubs. But not long after 79, they did away with working men and the north. And this is the actual toilet where young hopeful alternative comedians such as yourself would come and go to the toilet before going on stage and changing the face of society as we know it. That's right. What sort of audiences did you get in those days? Oh, it was exciting. They were people who were out for something different. People who were willing to work with you to challenge what we all saw as being outdated morals and mores. They were people who were almost literally prepared to spit in the face of bourgeois convention. But, most significantly of all, I think, they were people who were very, very drunk indeed. And this is another back room then, Grandad? Yeah. Another back room where young, alternative hopefuls would come and sit sometimes. That's right. Do you think that so-called alternative comedy has actually changed the face of society as we know it? Certainly. It did a lot for the unemployment figures, for instance. I mean, I haven't signed on for years. What about the other big names that got their first break here? Well, what you must remember is that anybody could get up on the stage here and give it a go. So, a lot of the people appeared once, got booed off, and were never heard of again. But some of them went on to become big names. Derek Frobisher, Tony Ridpath, Kathy Saunders, the amazing Soutine brothers. They were all people who were never heard of again. But then, for instance, I remember Peter Sissons. He had a novelty juggling act in those days. Doris Lessing, 
She used to do a very funny routine, like Max Miller's Blue Book, except hers was golden. Meryl Streep and Sammy the Sheep, very funny vent act they were. They all started here. Now, as you know, Grandad, one day I hope to fill your airwear souls and become a stand-up so-called alternative comedian myself. What advice would you give me? Well, rule one, timing. Nothing is more crucial to a good comedian than timing. Always time your entrance perfectly so you fuck up the punchline of the act that's on before you. Rule two, funny words. The following words are funny. Chicken, trousers, shoes, hat, cheese, lobster, tortoise, teapot, toolbox, tickling. Try to get them into your act as much as possible. Rule three, shoes. Nobody was ever funny in grey slip-ons. Rule four, golf. Playing golf with Jimmy Tarbuck is instant death for an alternative comic. If you must play in a pro-celebrity tournament, make sure the other celebs are Lou Reed and the Jesus and Mary chain. Rule five, electrical safety. Never ever adjust electrical equipment with wet hands. Rule six, hecklers. Always have a witty repost ready in case of hecklers. My witty repost can usually be seen wandering round the auditorium with a length of lead pipe in his hand. Rule seven, dying on stage. If you die on stage and the audience really doesn't like you, smash up your dressing room. Rule eight, shoes. Remember about them shoes. Rule nine, there is no rule nine. Rule ten, if you steal material, make sure it isn't old Monty Python routines that everybody knows by heart. Thanks, Grandad. And finally, could you get on stage and do one of your old routines for us, just like the old days? No, son. I couldn't. I mean, I'm not sure I can even still remember. Please, Grandad. If not for me, for old time's sake. It's been a long time, son. I mean, I'm not sure I've still got it in me. I'm not sure I can even remember. Oh, well... Yes, yes. Wait a minute. Yes, there is one. This, this was one of my best bits. If, if I can still remember, yes, this was a funny routine. How'd it go now? Ladies and gentlemen, will you please give a big welcome to French and Saunders! Incredible. The magic's still there, Grandad.